Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is February 10th. The weather stinks. So we're going to talk to Justin more about what to expect. Lots of changes on the horizon. That's coming up later in the newscast. But what doesn't stink is this story that's gone viral. It is by far my most favorite. I keep laughing every time I see it. Okay, so we know we've all had our, you know, fair share of remote working or learning mishaps, but this one really takes the cake for embarrassing blunders. Uh, so it happened in Culberson County, and it's one of the attorneys working the case on Zoom. He didn't know he had a cat filter on. Yeah, this has made national headlines, and we have a snippet we want to play for you I'm now. I'm not alive. Not, I'm not a cat. <laughs> I love that he had to clarify, I'm here live. I'm not a cat. Uh, this, the judge said, I believe you have a filter turned on your video setting, and he went ahead and said, can you hear me, judge? I don't know how to remove it. I got my assistant here. She's trying. Yeah, the judge said these fun moments are a byproduct of the legal profession's dedication to ensuring the justice system continues to function in these tough times. Everyone involved handled it with dignity and the filtered lawyer showed incredible grace, true professionalism all around. But the, the, the lawyer kept talking <laughs> and the, the cat kept mouthing the words. And at one point he even says, judge, I'm ready to proceed <laughs> as the cat if need be, basically. What a good <laughs> Look at the look. I, I mean, I guess there are worse filters, right? There definitely are. It was just so innocent and sweet. He was so serious and earnest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. So I looked up the backstory, and apparently it was his assistant's laptop. And I, I, the assistant's daughter, daughter had been playing see, yeah. on the computer. So yeah, that that makes sense. Um, our director Jamie just said that she thought that that the that the lawyer was ready to proceed. Right, meow. <laughs> Here's today. Thank you nine for the nine. courtesy <laughs> laugh, Katie Blake. <laughs> The second impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump opened with an emotional appeal from lead impeachment manager Jamie Raskin. Senate Democrats voted to move forward with the trial, joined by six Republicans. The House impeachment managers will take the floor for their opening statements this afternoon. Metro Health is reporting two cases of the COVID-19 UK variant in Bear County. Still unclear how long the UK variant has been in our area. There are at least 40 confirmed cases throughout the state of Texas. The number of COVID-19 cases in Bear County going up. Local health officials report 1,348 new cases of COVID-19. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says this includes some backlog cases from the state report. No new deaths were reported. The CDC expected to update its guidance on sending kids back to class in person this week. As of now, many of the country's 13,000 school districts have come up with their own standards. President Joe Biden's goal is to have more than 50% of schools back open by day 100 of his presidency. One person is dead and four others were injured after a man opened fire at a health clinic in Buffalo, Minnesota. A 67-year-old local man was arrested. The suspect had been banned from the facility since 2018. Three people are in critical condition and one was discharged from the hospital. Federal investigators are revealing new findings on what caused the helicopter crash that killed NBA legend Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and seven others. They say the pilot pushed the limits flying in bad weather, abandoning basic flight rules and his training. Investigators are using this crash to set new standards and practices for helicopter pilots to prevent crashes. The New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ are going to court against the SEC. The issue, new federal plans that would require the exchanges make more information public. That data is typically sold to investors at a premium. Breakfast food brand Aunt Jemima has a new name, though now operating under the Pearl Milling Company title and logo. The new brand will make its debut in June. Shows are expected to return at the Majestic Theater this fall. Their lineup begins in September with My Fair Lady. Other shows on the schedule are The Lion King and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and then Hamilton in 2022. And that's today's 9 at 9. Got that email yesterday about the upcoming show schedule for the Majestic, and all I'm thinking is I'm crossing my fingers that it's all can stay on schedule right now, Sarah. I know. I'm really looking forward to Hamilton. 
I know it'd be good to see it yeah, on stage here in San Antonio. It would be super cool. Let's go outside with live cam on the early edition of GMSA. Justin, I theorize that the what is that? What is that? I theorize, <laughs> Justin, that the winter has been so mild so far yeah. that we're going to get a winter's worth of weather in the next week. It's just all like at once. A, yeah. It's going to happen all at once. Uh, yeah, it is going to get very busy. I think as we get into the weekend with possibility of some pretty chilly temperatures and some wintry weather. Yes, it is possible. We're first going to start out talking about fog, though, because there is quite a bit of it out there. At the airport, we're down about three quarters of a mile of visibility. New Braunfels, Kerrville, Seguin, all places dealing with fog this morning. And it's not just those four spots everywhere, pretty much dealing with fog at this shower. Let's look at the visibility uh, around the area, and you can see that it's widespread. So Rock Springs down close to zero. Del Rio, two and a half miles. You get the general ID here. Fog's going to be around for a while, so will drizzle. It's going to be a cloudy day, also a chance for some showers. We're already seeing some showers building down there around Beeville and Victoria. Those will work north. It becomes more widespread as we get into tomorrow. Some decent rainfall totals, I think, head our way on Thursday. As far as temperatures are concerned, that frontal battery is still around, but it has pushed through San Antonio now, so it's going to be a very different day. 50 degrees right now, that's probably where we stay throughout the afternoon, right around that number. Pollen count is in. Interestingly enough, ash dropped, uh, jumped to the top of the list here. 570 and high. Mountain Cedars moderate. Mold and Elm are low. And very quickly, our forecast for today, we're expecting those temperatures again to hold pretty steady in the low 50s, 20% chance of rain. We'll talk about rainfall totals tomorrow and that potential for a wintry mix over the weekend and into early next week coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, taking a look outside with Transguide I-35 and Evans, there's that fog Justin was talking about. You can barely see through the lens. I can't tell if that's fog or just a dirty camera lens, but if you're heading out to work, be safe. Covered in water droplets at this moment. All right, this new this morning was started as a robbery at a gas station convenience store ended with a truck crashing right into a homeowner's fence just before 7. Police say a man wearing a black hoodie, red pants, and a mask with a cow pattern came into the convenience store in the 10,000 block of Dover Ridge, threatened the clerk, stole some cigarettes. Then somehow the suspect ended up in a pickup outside that belonged to a customer. Two started to fight over the steering wheel, ended up doing donuts in the parking lot and crashing through when one end of a neighbor's fence. After the wreck, the suspect ran off. The truck's owner was taken to the hospital with a cut to the forehead. And right now, police are checking surveillance cameras in the area. A fire on the city's northeast side is under investigation this morning. San Antonio fire crews arrived to Purple Sage Mobile Home Park around 730 this morning. The park is located in the 2100 block of Austin Highway. That's where they found an RV trailer fully engulfed in flames. According to the San Antonio Fire Department, crews were already in the area responding to a false fire call. As crews were leaving the scene, they spotted flames coming from the mobile home park. Thankfully, no one was inside and the fire was quickly put out. Estimated costs are still have not spilt, still been released, but the trailer has been deemed a total loss. A spokesperson says they are still trying to locate the owner. Uh, the top stories this morning. Well, men's COVID-19 vaccine hotline is open yet again. The hotline will be open from till until 8 p.m. or until the slots are filled. The number to call 833 833- 968-1745. Again, 833-968-1745. This is for the vaccination clinics at the Cisnero Senior Community Center on the south side and the Trevino Lopez Senior Center on the northwest side. Well, the city of Bernie is hosting a COVID-19 vaccination hub on Friday. Registration for the slots are open right now. You can sign up for a spot on the city of Bernie's website. Registration must be done online. 500 doses will be administered at the St. Peter Apostle Catholic Church in Bernie on Friday. We have more information about all the vaccination efforts right now on KSAT.com. All right, Sarah, we're going to split this one up. In your morning headlines, bounty hunters just bust into a guy's house and ice fishermen had to be rescued from the ice. And where does a five foot boa constrictor hide and a cardboard cutout becomes a real life friend? David Sears has explained all of this. Good morning, David. Yeah, that cardboard cutout story is, is really interesting. It happened at the Super Bowl. We'll have all that for you for just a second. But first, let's take it to Buffalo, New York. Those are two bounty hunters banging on the front door of the home of Jake Reinhardt. 
Their guns are drawn when Jake comes out of the door. They're looking for a certain guy. Now it's freezing. The bounty hunters ordered him to come outside. No shirt, no shoes. He's trying to explain to them that his fiance, who is eight months pregnant, and their three-year-old daughter are inside the house. They still got their guns drawn. It didn't stop them, though. They eventually head inside, start searching. Reinhardt asks them for a warrant. They say they have one, but never show it. And then they come across his family. My fiance came around this corner right here with my three-year-old in her arms. And I don't know if she startled the first gentleman to make entry, but um, as she appeared, he raised his firearm to her. Yeah, after they scared his family half to death, Reinhardt tried to explain to him that the man they are looking for doesn't live there, and Reinhardt hadn't seen him in a year. They continue to walk through the house with guns drawn. They head upstairs where another family is renting space, and that family's baby cam catches him continuing to hunt for that person. Here's the interesting twist. Two Buffalo police officers are standing outside while all this is going on. They're not even real sure who these bounty hunters are or who they work for. After some tense moments, the person they were looking for couldn't be found, so they left. Now Reinhardt has a lawyer who has filed a civil rights violation lawsuit. The county DA also investigating. All right, this one's got a let's go to Duluth, Minnesota. Rescue workers there having to go after a bunch of ice fishermen who ended up stranded on a sheet of ice out in Lake Superior. This happened yesterday morning. Firefighters were able to get two dozen ice anglers to safety. There were no reports of any life-threatening injuries. Unfortunately, the fishermen had to leave the bunch of rods and reels and other equipment behind. So now they've got to see if they can get to all that stuff before it ends up at the bottom of the lake. All right, you got to wonder about a couple of guys holding a snake with a big smile on their face. Ooh, the boa constrictor is found wedged in the dashboard of its owner's car after a trip to the vets. These two protective animal service officers in North Carolina came to the rescue of the snake. They were able to safely remove it from the dash. And now the pet is back home. No one's sure how the snake got all wrapped up in the dash, but it took a while to get it out. And finally this morning, meet LJ Giovanni. He was lucky enough to go to the Super Bowl on Sunday. He ended up sitting next to one of those thousands of cardboard cutouts. All game long, he called him Frank. Then he decided to see if he could actually track down the real person on the cardboard. LJ spent a lot of time tweeting out selfies and his cardboard buddy Frank, till finally they were able to get connected through social media. Frank's real name is Clayton. LJ has invited him and his family to Tampa to enjoy the brewery that he owns and maybe even show Clayton where they were sitting. Football, fans to friends. And remember, Clayton bought that seat for his cardboard cutout for 100 bucks. All that went to charity. So he said it was worth $100 to do that. He spent it. 100 bucks on a lot of worse things, so now he's got a friend for life. Yeah, from virtual seatmates to best friends. Yes, Just and the guy owns example. a brewery, so that's even better, I guess. Sports bringing people together. There you go. Thank you, David. 9 11, 51 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. We'll tell you how long it took for a man to build this snowy rec recreation of Washington, D.C.'s Lincoln Memorial. How a hockey superfan missed her shot at meeting her favorite star player. We'll have that story. And next, we are giving local students a virtual career day and showing off what we do behind the scenes here at KSAT 12. Quarter past the hour, trending now in the KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. A look behind the scenes of what we do here at KSAT 12. Before the pandemic, students often had a chance to tour our station to learn more about what we do. We really miss those tours, and of course that's not possible for the time being, but we wanted to take some time to answer some frequently asked questions. Things like how and why did we get into this business and what it takes to be part of our industry. Here's some of the advice from our KSAT family for those wanting to become TV journalists. My advice for any kid out there is that it's possible. You know, a lot of people like myself, I grew up watching the morning news, I grew up watching ESPN, and I never would have thought that's a job. Whenever you have a chance to, if you find something new, even if you started in middle school, UIL, all of that, it, all of that, all of those groups and, and clubs, they're gonna help you find what you want. You still have to read and write. 
No matter we're still in this digital age, even if you're reading it on a tablet or on your phone or something, or even if it's a book, uh, you still have to read, you still have to learn how to, to write because you still have to learn how to communicate. Don't be afraid to try new things. Um, if you try something and you don't like it, hop onto your next goal, your next dream, and you'll end up finding something that you love to do. Take advantage of all the opportunities that may come your way when it comes to internships. Any chance to just get your foot in the door is a great opportunity. So I hope that this helps you guys out in the future, and good luck. All right, so that included some of our producers and editors as well. And then you just saw RJ and, and that other guy, uh, Max. Is that his name? Massey? Massey. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Sounds that familiar. Guy. Of course, this is just part of the story. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a closer look at what some of the producers are doing as they work from home to put all our shows together. And you can check out all the interviews on KSAT.com. I know, Mark, you were interviewed. I was interviewed as well. And it's in the KSAT Kids section. I need to go back and see what I said. I think you did good. Oh, I did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you did well, too. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. You guys are pros. Oh. You really are. Thank you, Justin. And you're a pro, Justin, because, I mean, you have so much on your plate right now with this week forecast. This is one of the busiest forecasts I can remember, you know, at least within the last few years. We've got a lot going on. You're right. Uh, let's first start with the fog because it is foggy out there. We've got low visibility in many, many spots. 50 degrees at the airport, 48 stints in 52 Kelly, 47 at Randolph. It's pretty chilly too. With that northeasterly wind at about eight miles per hour, there is a wind chill uh, to deal with this morning too. Visibility down about three quarters of a mile at the airport. Most of Bear County is somewhere within that range. And you look around the area, places like Rock Springs down to zero, uh, New Braunfels, mile and a quarter. Uh, one mile visibility there in Gonzales. So this is going to be a problem for several more hours. We're also going to have cloud cover and the potential for some showers. You see those showing up here on the radar. Places like Bevo and Victoria getting in on a little bit of rain. And even if it's not showing up on radar, there's drizzle there too. So it's going to be a damp, gray type day. Temperatures are not going to warm up very much because now we're on the other side of the front. If you remember yesterday, we we're trying to figure out where that front was going to set up. We stayed on the warm side of it here in San Antonio, but that has changed today. You look at the big picture, there are some returns that looks like up to the north and maybe a little bit of wintry mix. We're not uh, dealing with that just yet. There could be some potential for that, though, down the line. Uh, across the state, 33 in Waco, 29 Dallas. It's 19 in Amarillo. It's been really cold there for several days now. We're just starting to feel a little bit of it here. It's in the 40s for the hill country, places like New Braunfels, Austin, Gonzales, 50s here, San Antonio, Pleasanton, Tejondo. And that cooler air is trying to work its way west. Still fairly warm in Del Rio, where it's 64 and 73 down there in Laredo, where they got into the 90s yesterday, or at least close to it. Forecast temperatures today, I think we probably don't get out of the 40s in places like New Braunfels and Fredericksburg. It'll be hard for us to really change much here in San Antonio either, so low 50s, and then you will find some warmer, warmer stuff down to the south and west. 20% chance rain across the board on top of the drizzle that we're already seeing. Northeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's what the forecast looks like as a computer model sees it. This is around 5 o'clock today seeing some showers. And then as we get into tomorrow, some better chances of rain. I mean, this is pretty widespread stuff. I think we could see some thunderstorms mixed in there too, and you're probably going to see the purple there. Yes, there could be a little bit of a mix tomorrow morning across so maybe places like Fredericksburg and Junction, but I don't think it's a huge issue. Temperatures have been warm enough to where uh, I don't think it would cause any travel issues, but something to watch. The rest of us is just liquid, and we could pick up some pretty decent rainfall. This is all going to wind down Thursday night. I think we could see up to an inch in spots, three quarters of an inch certainly possible here in San Antonio. So that's great news when it comes to rainfall. Now let's go farther out here. A Friday looks to be a quiet day. As we get into Saturday, another little piece of energy comes through. I think we can see a few showers here in San Antonio. Probably not cold enough for a mix, but as you get into the hill country, there could be a light wintry mix there. Again, Saturday, not too much of an issue. I think the bigger issues may come in Sunday night into Monday morning. That's when we get a more robust system coming through, and we could see a wintry mix here in San Antonio. Snow, the possibility for some ice. This is something we'll have to watch, and this would wind down Monday afternoon. So right now, here's how the seven day plays out. 52 today, 42 tomorrow, 47 on Friday and mostly cloudy. And then look for a 20% chance of rain Saturday, 42, 34 on Sunday, and lows in the 20s potentially Monday morning, 
with some precipitation coming through. We'll have a much better idea of sort of the timing and what we can expect, maybe travel wise and that sort of thing uh, over the next couple days. So stay tuned and we'll certainly keep you updated. Burr, thank, all right, thank you, Justin. Yep. 921, 51 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine, we'll tell you why a man decided to build this 14 foot re recreation of the Lincoln Memorial out of snow. A hockey super fan kicking herself for not answering a knock at the door that turned out to be her favorite NHL star making a house call. CNN's Jeremy Roth has that story and more in today's Take a Look at This. Hockey great Wayne Gretzky said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, a Las Vegas hockey super fan missed her shot at meeting her favorite star player when she decided not to answer a knock at her door. Megan McDonald was chilling in her living room when she heard the knock. I was right here on my couch watching TV. She checked her ring doorbell cam and thought, I don't know this guy. Nice dress guy, assumed it was a solar salesman. But in fact, it was three-time Stanley Cup champion Mark andre Fleury, McDonald's favorite player, personally delivering an autographed jersey she'd won in a COVID relief raffle. It wasn't until she received an email from Fleury's agent confirming the special delivery that she realized what had happened. She's been kicking herself ever since. Every day, I wake up and see the jersey hanging in my closet, getting ready to be framed and go, why didn't I open the door? It didn't take four score and seven years to build, but that doesn't make this New Jersey man's snowy sculpture of President Lincoln any less impressive. The amazing 14-foot recreation of Washington, D.C.'s Lincoln Memorial is the latest labor of love from Robert Schott, who's made a name for himself with wintry works of wonder over the years. This patriotic piece took him an estimated 60 hours to construct, and his neighbors aren't just in awe, they're appreciative. Shots hoping the sculpture will hold out for Lincoln's birthday and President's Day. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Impressive. I hope he's not getting a lot of snow. Doesn't look like there was much to work with. Yeah. I mean, the ground was pretty much bare other than the sculpture. More ahead on GMSA at 9. Still ahead on GMSA, how beloved longtime Jeopardy host Alex Trebek is still giving back to others thanks to his stylish wardrobe. Disney California Adventure Park set to open its doors after being closed for months due to the pandemic. Plus, the San Antonio Spurs couldn't make it to the four wins in a row last night against Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. Highlights and a look at their annual rodeo round trip road trip is coming up. Something like that. And yeah. let's check Transcad right now. 37 at Fair Avenue. The roads look fairly dry there, but we know that's not the case everywhere right now. A forecast you can't miss with Justin Horn coming up. I smell a rant coming. It was a rough night for our Spurs as they get beat by Golden State in a rematch from Monday night's game. David and RJ are live with us to break down the loss of the Warriors. David, I think this is your fault because Ooh. you jinxed it yesterday. Oh, wow. You said, I like these back-to-back -back games. Throwing them right under. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David, I got Any nothing thoughts? for that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to respond to that. I, mean, okay. don't, don't I think no. I, I definitely think we we heap too much praise on them for some reason. And then yeah, they came out and uh, this was just an, an ugly game. Well, uh, it's, really, it's from stunk. the second half on. They yeah. stunk. It the stunk. Speaker. The whole thing stunk. But yeah. that's their pattern. They win two or three in a row, and then they you know get blown out of the gym. And then they come back. They win two or three in a row. I think they've they've lost four in a row one time. Mm -hmm. And they've lost two in a row twice. They've yeah. won three in a row, like three or four. I think I wrote, let's see, they won three in a row three times. Yeah, very so inconsistent. They get they get on a little run, and then it's like, all right, we're good. And the next thing you know, we're not <laughs> yeah. so good. Meaning so, they but, get our hopes up, and then they crush us. Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's that what they did. Um, but so, but they're, they're, they're climbing up the, the ladder. They yeah. come down one rung, then go up three rungs, and come down a rung, then go up three rungs. As long as that's working like that, we're okay. You put yeah, your one, left foot um, in, you put your left foot out. <laughs> one positive, though, is that we probably don't have to see Steph Curry again for the rest Yay! of the season until uh, maybe playoffs if they end up getting the Warriors there. But uh, yeah, no yeah, Steph. It. Thank God for that. No more Golden State. They've been really tough on the Spurs this year. Uh, you know, I mean, the guy's just absolutely incredible. How come he's not the MVP every year? Why is it always LeBron? LeBron can't do what this uh -oh, guy can do. Have you go. seen I'm some LeBron of this? Again. Have you seen? Yeah, but it, have you this seen is some probably of a separate this segment, makes, right? Huh? This is probably a separate segment. Probably Why? later. We'll do that later. Okay. But come closer to MVP awards. Okay. I mean, 
<laughs> Steph is just, he's just incredible. He's hard to guard. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. I mean, a guy gets to the basket and it goes. I mean, he missed the layup last night. Everybody fell down. Like what? And free throws. Yeah. And he missed two row, two in a row on free throws. Guy shoots ninety three percent from free throw line. Yeah. So, um, anyway. A couple of things. Derek White did not play in this nope. game, which uh, I think was kind of a big difference. Lonnie Walker came back, but I don't know what's going on with Lonnie. We've been trying to figure this out. Well, but you Zero see who started last night. Bench. Well, they started the rook. They started a rookie. Devin the Zell got, got the start last night. So, and he came through again. I mean, th this kid can play. I mean, we, they got they've got a lot of young guys. That, like I, I've, I've said it all season long, and I'll continue to say it till something changes my mind, which hadn't <laughs> changed my mind yet. They're growing, and they're getting better, and they have their little setbacks. Yeah, but they're continuing to grow. Their defense last night was bad. Ooh. They didn't communicate. It's like you got to talk to each other, and you know they can hear them because there's no fans in the stands. So I don't know why they're not yelling at each other. Hey, you know, pick up that guy over yeah. there. So, yeah. so I mean, you know, I, we haven't heard Pop a lot though. I haven't heard no, him yell. No, over there. yeah, no. There's been a few times he's kind of chewed yeah. him out a little bit, but uh, but we don't hear that. Speaking of communication, Dejounte uh -huh. Murray. Here's what he had to say about that and Ooh. guarding Steph Curry. Here we go. We could have communicated better. Uh, obviously, we. It doesn't go our way in offense in either. We're not getting stops. So it's just hard to win a game. It's just hard to game plan against him. He moves so well without the ball. And, you know, with the ball, he's so shifty and crafty with it. And his teams know how to get him the ball really well. So, you know, it's, it's really tough. See, DeJounte and yes. I are on the same wavelength, right? You don't, there you go. Yes. Everything he said, I've already said. So he's listening in. Right, right. Yeah, well. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Um, yeah, so Spurs end up this uh, this long homestand. They now hit the road. Of course, the start of the rodeo road trip. Good thing is they are uh, seven and three on the road this season, and uh, they actually get Atlanta on Friday night. They play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven road games. Mm -hmm. Six of them are against Eastern Conference teams, and only one team has a winning record out of all the games they're yeah. playing. One has a. Indiana is is like 12 and 12, something like that. They're, right. they're 500. Take care of business Atlanta is above teams. 500, yeah. but everybody else is below yeah. 500. And again, so. they play better on the road than they at do. home. So no rodeo at the AT&T Center, but we're still going on the trip anyway. And they play like like it's the 12th, the 14th, and a back-to-back -back 16 and 17 against Detroit and then Cleveland, and then 20, 22, 24. So it's going to be a rough mm -hmm. it's going to be a rough road trip. I mean, they're playing every other day except for the back-to-back -back in there, just about. So. What I think is kind of funny is you got you guys are like, okay, we don't have to play Memphis anymore, thank nope. God. And now you've added <laughs> Golden, Golden State, State to that well, list. Yeah. So we don't have to play them the anymore. Lakers. The Lakers are on that list too. <laughs> yeah. Are they? So, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. We'll see them in the playoffs. Yes, there we go. Prediction. Playoffs. Playoffs. Gotcha. First. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've said it all along. Also, real quick, I read a brief uh -huh. column yesterday that said that uh, DeMar DeRozan has solidified his Fall Hall of Fame career right here in San Antonio this season. Agree, disagree? Oof. Uh, Steve Kerr was the one who said that the That's other right. day during yes. his pregame, that he thinks DeMar's a Hall of Fame player. I think DeMar's definitely... An all-star player this year, uh, I don't know about Hall of Fame. I think he needs to win, at least get to a conference championship again. I don't, yeah, I'm I on the fence. I'm with that. I'm with that. He's in the Hall of Very Good. Although <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's saved the Spurs bacon on several occasions yes. so far yes. this season. And so. that's a nice way to put it. All right, so Hall of Very Good for now. For now. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Taking a look outside. If, can we see it now? Not really. Uh, there's a lot of fog out there, Justin. Is it going to clear up anytime soon? Uh, it's going to take some time. Sarah, I think we're going to be foggy here for at least several more hours. It's also going to be cloudy today and somewhat damp. So look for a gray day. Temperatures will be on the cool side. Let's start with visibility here in San Antonio. It's still down to about three quarters of a mile here in town. Two miles in Kerrville, one mile in Gonzales. It's widespread. This fog is basically across the area. It will lift slowly, but you see all the cloud cover there. And there is also some rain showers working your way to the north and west down around Beeville and Victoria. There's a chance for some showers today, about a 20% chance. Our rain chances do pick up tomorrow, by the way. We are behind the front now, so we're at 50 degrees here in San Antonio, 40s for much of the Hill Country. New Braunfels checking in at 46. Ahead of the front, still fairly warm, 73 down there in Laredo. That front will continue to progress west and southwest. 20% chance of rain through the day today. Temperatures hold pretty steady, right around 50 degrees, really. And we'll have a pretty stout northeasterly wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Of course, the big story is the rain tomorrow and the chance for some wintry precipitation early next week. We're going to detail all of that for you coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with TransGuide. There's some moisture on the lens there. That's 410. And Jackson Keller, if you're traveling out there, you heard Justin talk about that fog. Please be safe. 
In your good news this morning, Jeopardy host Alex Trebek's stylish wardrobe has been passed on. Trebek's clothes were donated to a charity organization that helps the homeless. That wardrobe includes everything from suits to sweaters and even coats. The game show's executive producer says it was, quote, the perfect way to begin to honor Trebek's last request, end quote. Disney's California Adventure Park is set to open its doors next month for a limited time food festival. That means that roughly a thousand workers furloughed or laid off due to the pandemic will be back at work for the event. The announcement to employees came nearly a year after the theme park shut down indefinitely due to the pandemic. Just about 938, 50 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And one of my favorite segments, grab those white lab coats and goggles. It's time for science after the break. Katie Blake will join us with her latest experiment. Today, information and knowledge is at your fingertips. But in the early 1900s, two local men, John Grumbles and Charles Bellinger, had to fight for a library for the black community. They successfully created the Carver Branch Library on Hackberry and brought in Prudus Lewis Curry as the first librarian at the branch. She was kind of like the start of it all. She was a school teacher in South Carolina, then Perry View A&M. She married Pastor Curry of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Then with a passion for education, she spent the next 28 years leading the library. In 1973, the librarian moved to where it currently sits, off East Commerce Street. This is a place where their history is on display, it's respected, it's celebrated, and it doesn't die. Today, the library, which is dedicated to Curry, continues to serve the neighborhood with everything from book fairs and Black History Month events to fitness and karaoke. It is the Wednesday before Valentine, Valentine's Day, so it would make sense those little heart candies would be a key part of today's Katie's Science Hub. You know the ones that say, kiss me or go away? Mm -hmm. Hug me. <laughs> of course, Mark's heart says go away. No, no. <laughs> Katie, no, maybe no. you're, I know you're, you're kind of the same. You're a little like, you don't want, you know. Yes, go away. Like your space. <laughs> oh, and you have your assistant, She's David not, Sears. I'm talking to you, David. It depends. You, <laughs> you don't have to go away. Just crushed there for a second. I know. <laughs> it hurt me. Oh, my gosh. I, I learned a lot about these conversation hearts in the past couple of days because yeah. now they're not all the same. They're different, and that had an effect on my trials of our experiment when I was doing it D at home. Different in that what they say or how they're made? I think kind of different in what they say, but also how they're made. So this is this is your main ingredient for today, the conversation hearts. This was the bag I picked up. These are much bigger than the old school ones, and they're not as chalky. Okay, so and it's so very the hard to tell from this from view. Rocks, the candy maker that's well, been around a long time. So are so are these. Huh. The good ones. So I you, know what you're saying, Katie, because I like the old ones because they're they taste better. Yes. The other ones are a little sour, the newer ones. These, yeah, and these are the old school ones you want are the kind of chalky ones. Hey, maybe, Love the, you. maybe the sayings so, are more sour too. David has eaten so I many want of that, them. I want that I, bag, Katie. These, this bag, they say things like this says love and text me. That's yeah. where text me. Yeah, please. You, you throw that one on the floor. <laughs> this one says miss you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Are we supposed to do an experiment or just eat the candy? <laughs> David has laid claim to all of the conversation hearts. Um, so you can you can have them, except he said he doesn't like banana. Banana is the best flavor. Mm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. So good. What are we supposed to do? Um, okay, so you need a conversation hearts candy. You'll also need some Alka Seltzer clear cup or glass in water. And so here's you can do this a couple different ways. So. I have some sparkling water, just clear sparkling water. Uh, we used that, that was our trial one. So we put the sparkling water and then we put the conversation hearts in and they're trying to dance around thanks to uh, the bubbles in the sparkling water. I haven't seen them move a lot yet. If you want a little more bang for your buck here, you can use sparkling cool. water and Alka-Seltzer. So oh, that's so what we're going to do. Both? We have uh, four Alka-Seltzer tablets crushed up here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And this. then we're going to add in some sparkling water. 
And of course the water is going to make uh, the Alka-Seltzer tablets all fizzy. We've got some CO2 bubbles going on in here, some fizzy action. Go ahead and crack that one open, David. Blueberry so, pomegranate. Oh, that smells Does it so matter nice. the flavor? It, okay, I it thought does it was not, gonna it, spray. You it were turning not, it sideways. It does not matter the flavor. So then Ooh, you'll put your- that's kind of weird tasting. <laughs> especially with all those hearts. Okay. <laughs> so you'll drop your conversation yeah. hearts in there mm. and it may, it may take a couple of minutes, but eventually Ooh. the CO2 bubbles are going to help to pick up the conversation hearts, lift them to the top of mm -hmm. the glass. Then the bubbles, uh, the bubbles, the bubbles will burst and then the hearts will fall back down. So they'll kind of do a little dance. You can see there, they're kind of starting to move around yeah, just a little, a little bit. There they go. There we go. Yeah, so it helps to have the Alka-Seltzer and the sparkling water because you get kind of double the, the CO2 bubble bang for your buck there and that will get those hearts dancing a little faster. Mm -hmm. So this is something fun. The kiddos can see the, the, the different colored hearts bouncing around there and then you, of course, you've got a lot of things to to snack on. There's nothing better than an experiment that you can eat. Oh my gosh, David, Did stop eating these. Like, it's like you're getting <laughs> the cavities. I have a lot. I was I got real nervous when we ran into the wrong, because these these conversation hearts, the ones that aren't as chalky, right. they're too heavy, so they couldn't be lifted up by, by the oh, CO2 those, bubbles. Oh, those. Oh, did you see that? It's we just lifted up right there. The green, look at the green one. Yes. Oh, it's cool. Magic. <laughs> Look at that. That's the reaction we want. It's, just, it's bouncing all around. Let me see if yeah, I can I'm turn. I'm sure it. kids will have the same reaction. <laughs> look at that. So the carbonated <laughs> water. Oh, yeah, look at it go. Yeah, so the carbonated go. water, alkyl seltzer, and the little heart. Yes. Dancing hearts in there. And, and enjoy. And don't forget, um, if you try any of our KD Science Lab experiments at home, there's a place on ksat.com now where you can go and upload a video and you may see it on GMSA at nine. So show us what you got. How, does, how, how does the cocktail taste, David Sears? I don't know, let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, that's got alka in it. I'm not sick yet. I don't need well, that. Well, you will be after all the candy you're eating. It'll be good for digestion. <laughs> we'll I'll, get you some. I'll drink it in a bit. Okay, right. plenty of candy. Katie, thank you you're very much. More on ksat.com. David, you all right? What's that one say? BFF. Aww. Aww. And yeah. this one is, oh, I can't read that one. They have updated these, haven't they? LOL. Yeah. yeah. Imagine Next. if we were like in grade LOL. school and you go, here, BFF. <laughs> 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 what? Justin, hi. Hi, Hello. Justin. The text me one, that's what got me. That's. Text me? Well, that's what it said on the heart, right? Mm. That's different. Mm. Yep. That's different. Ah, 2021. Ooh, what you gonna do? Okay, well, we've got a busy forecast coming up. Cloudy skies, we've got some fog out there right now. Temperature, 50 degrees, some drizzle coming down. North northeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. That makes it feel a little chillier out there. We are gonna have a wind chill, I think, for most of the day. Visibility-wise, we're down about half a mile in Bernie Stage, two miles in New Braunfels. It's pretty widespread. I mean, this fog is across all of South Texas this morning. So uh, everyone's gonna deal with it for the next couple of hours. And then we'll transition to more cloudy skies and the potential for a few showers. And the drizzle will be, will be out there, too. Uh, the satellite and radar here shows some of those showers working in the Carnes County now, lifting north. So I think some of these showers could eventually make their way up to San Antonio. Not to mention that we're not picking up the drizzle on the radar here. So it is there. And there's going to be some wet roads. What I want to do is show you water vapor here, and this gives us a good idea of some of the systems that are working in our direction. We can see the spin in the atmosphere. And here's our next system. This is going to dig south and work right into South Texas. That's good news for us when it comes to rainfall. I think we're going to see some pretty decent amounts. As we look at the forecast going forward, here's our spotty shower activity today, staying cloudy. But as we get into tomorrow, notice that we get quite a bit more activity. Showers and even a few thunderstorms. So don't be surprised tomorrow if you get a few rumbles of thunder and uh, some of these thunderstorms put down some good rain. You'll also notice the purple and pink here across the hill country. Yes, there could be a little bit of a wintry mix up there, but I'm not too concerned about it because I think temperatures have been warm enough to where the impacts would be pretty low. It's a small window for that to happen. And that would be mainly up there around Fredericksburg and Junction. Rain starts to move east by tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And as we look at the rainfall potential, up to an inch, mainly south and east of San Antonio, I think we could see about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch here in town, which would help. We still need the rain for sure. And right now, temperatures are in the 50s here in San Antonio, 50 degrees, 40s for places like New Braunfels and Gonzales. That frontal boundary is trying to push sort of southwest at this point. So numbers are coming down a little bit in Uvalde and Carrizo Springs. Still warm in Del Rio, still warm in Laredo. 
will be behind the front all day long. So that's why we're going to see those cool temperatures and cloudy skies. And you look at the really cold air that's moving south. It's 19 in Amarillo, 25 in Wichita Falls, 29 right now in Dallas. And so the forecast site today, 40s off to the north and east, 50s here, low 50s for San Antonio. Temperatures actually stay pretty steady, and then the warmer stuff down to the south and west. Uh, again, low 50s, 20% chance of rain across the board. Let's go forward in time here now. Friday looks like a pretty quiet day. As we get into Saturday, another little disturbance rolls through. This will be light. I think we'll probably just see showers here in San Antonio. But once again, there could be a little bit of a mix across the hill country. Something to watch. Again, with things being light, shouldn't be a huge, huge issue. I think the bigger issues will come Sunday night into Monday morning. Stronger system moves in and we're expecting a wintry mix here around San Antonio uh, and even potentially down to the south of San Antonio before things move out on Monday. So that's when we could see some impacts. It's a little too early to say what those will be just yet, but stay tuned. And uh, 42 tomorrow, 47 on Friday, 42 Saturday, and then cold Sunday into Monday. Overnight lows will be in the 20s. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is a game changer for everyone working at home. You can now enjoy your beverages warm from the first sip to the very last drop with this mug warmer. It's the electric smart mug warmer. The lightweight sleek cup warmer uses smart technology to keep your beverage at the temperature you choose. It has 18 watt heating element that keeps your beverage between 104 and 140 degrees at the temperature you choose. Now it's safe automatically turns off after one minute if it senses there is no weight on there. Spills will not short out the water resistant design. Comes in black or white. Manufacturer's 30 day warranty and it can also be used for oatmeal, soups, beverages and more. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price $22.99. That's a 61% discount. You can find this deal and many others on caseatdeals.com. KSAP mugs not included, unfortunately. San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo saddles up tomorrow. Due to the pandemic, there have been some major changes. Only a few thousand folks will be allowed on the grounds. Because of COVID-19, the rodeo has come full circle. The Joe and Harry Freeman Coliseum is where it all began in San Antonio. And once again, the venue will play host to the competitors and entertainers. Coming up tonight here on KSAT, it's our annual Let's Rodeo San Antonio special. This year, we're bringing you the history of the sport. We'll take you back decades, even centuries, to show you how rodeo began. Also this year, we will be looking back at the junior livestock competition. You can watch our Let's Rodeo San Antonio special tonight on KSAT at 7 o'clock. And right now we're at 50 degrees. We'll stay right there most of the day. Low 50s chance of showers, drizzle, cloudy skies, better chance of showers and storms tomorrow, and then prepare for some pretty chilly temperatures as we get into the weekend and potentially a wintry mix Sunday night into Monday, guys. All right, Justin, thank you so much. Thanks for making us a part of your morning here on GMSA at 9. We'll see you back here for the news at noon. Have a good day.